Hi, it's The Wire. It's Tuesday, November 15th, 2022. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about Week 10 of the National Football League. But remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I grabbed these bets before last night's Monday Night Football Philadelphia Eagle Washington Commander game. Right? So understand you need to double check the lines. Also, for some of these bets, I bought points, right, to bring the line within the three point magic number. So, I believe the Minnesota Vikings, who at the time I made these bets, plural, uh, are going to beat the Dallas Cowboys. They were the underdogs at the time I made the bets. So I have the Vikings plus two and a half over the Cowboys. I also have the Vikings plus one and a half over the Cowboys. Right? Made the bet, thought about it. The line shifted, made the bet again. I like the Vikings over the Cowboys, especially now that Philadelphia has lost. Understand, Minnesota is in contention for the top seed in the NFC. I believe we're overlooking this team. Also, I know the Cowboys are loaded. No question about it. I myself, in a big game, would prefer Dak Prescott over Kirk Cousins, especially if that big game is on the road. But I need for people to realize that Jefferson of the Vikings might be the best wide receiver in the league, and that includes Tyreek Hill. His catch that kept the game alive, it was on a fourth down, in my opinion, was the best catch of the year, right? The guy can catch the balls in crowds. I have rarely seen this level of wide receiver, right? We're talking about him being just a shade off Randy Moss, in my opinion. Also, Dalvin Cook got a long touchdown. He's one of the better running backs in the league. Let's just say uh, Osborne is one of the better tight ends in terms of talent, in my opinion, in the league. Uh, this Viking team offensively can hang with anyone, talent-wise. Right? The big question for me is Kirk Cousins. Also, let's face it, Mike McCarthy, and I know we won a Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay, but he's not great in big games. He just simply isn't. Uh, the Cowboys also are without Zeke. I believe that the combination of Zeke and Pollard, right, give the Cowboys a more dynamic look from the running back position than just Pollard alone. Right, so Dallas lost last week. I'm expecting Dallas to lose this week. I like the Vikings in that game, right? I got points even if it were just straight up. I'd take the Vikings in that game. Next, you know, let's keep an eye on teams that have just completely fallen apart. One of those teams, in my eyes, are the Las Vegas Raiders. Folks, they are terrible. I mean, terrible. Right? And, of course, they have a first-year head coach. Not his first time being a head coach. He was a head coach with Denver years ago. But Josh McDaniels, this is his first year with the Raiders. And I'll just say the Raiders just don't look to me like they're prepared to play. So, Denver. And this is a shocker to me, right? Denver actually has a high-caliber defense. Folks, they're defensively blessed. It's the offense with Russell Wilson, a quarterback I consider to be one of the best who have failed the team, right? If this offense were even average, instead of being below average, the team would be much better off. Nonetheless, 
given that Denver's defense is an A-level defense, in my eyes, right? A-level. I'm taking Denver. I'm laying the three against the Las Vegas Raiders, right? I think Las Vegas, nothing is working. Devontae Adams has to be asking himself why he left Aaron Rodgers, right? Nothing's working for the Raiders. At least the defense is working for Denver. I like Denver laying three. Let's remember, too, Denver lost some bad games. They won a game late they shouldn't have won, but they also lost some bad games that they could have done better in. I like Denver, minus three over the Raiders. This next game is interesting. Patriots beat the Jets earlier this year, but Mac Jones got sacked six times. Right? The Jets seem to figure out how to get to the quarterback. Also, the Jets turned over the ball. You wonder what would have happened had the Jets just not had the turnovers. Now, all of that said, I like the Patriots here. I bought a point, so when I bet, I was able to get the line at Patriots minus two and a half, right, at a minus 144. In other words, to get the point, I had to give away odds. So I'm not getting a great rate of return. It's a minus 144 for me. But if the game ends on a field goal and the Patriots win it, then I collect. It's not a push. I actually collect on the minus two and a half. The actual line right now is Patriots minus three. Just be careful here because the over-under is low. The over-under is 38 and a half points. In other words, points are going to be at a premium here. So covering a three in my eyes is dangerous, so I've paid a little to get the two and a half. I like the Patriots laying two and a half at a minus 144 over the Jets. Finally, and I paid dearly for this because I'm only getting a minus 200, right? A minus 200, and it's a divisional game. In other words, there's familiarity. And I had to lay two and a half points, right? So I'm laying two and a half, and my possible payoff is only a minus 200. But I'm just telling people, the San Francisco 49ers were injured. A lot of guys were out, right? You are simply not going to find a better group of athletes in this league than this team's defense. What I want people to do is to look closely at the box score for the Diner game against the Chargers. Right, folks? Understand. The second half of that game, the Niner defense, and these are guys who are just playing together really for the first time all year, right? A lot of guys were injured. That Niner defense shut down one of the best young quarterbacks in this league in Justin Herbert, right? Also, the Niners got in the red zone, didn't get in the end zone a couple of times. That game easily could have been wider. I believe the Niners are going to make this part of the season, second half of November, all of December, their showcase because I believe this team, which got to the NFC championship game last year, right? They, they lost to the eventual champion Rams, right? And let's remember, this team also got to the Super Bowl against Pat Mahomes earlier. In other words, this team is postseason tested, right? I believe this team has just been maintaining most of the year with the idea of focusing on the playoffs. Everyone else in their division, except for Seattle, has fallen off, right? The Rams, forget it, right? Now I'm hearing Cooper Cup is hurt. You got to be kidding me, right? Keep in mind, um, Matthew Stafford missed last week. So the Rams are now missing a quarterback and, of course, his main target, 
right. Stick a fork in the Rams. The Niners are playing the Arizona Cardinals. Right now, the Cardinals won last week with a backup quarterback. But let's just say, in my eyes, Kyler Murray is too dependent on DeAndre Hopkins. Right? I'll agree. The Cardinals can surprise you at times. But let's just say, I believe they realize all the high hopes they had in August are no longer viable. Right? So, I think San Francisco is going to be a play, not just for this week, but for coming weeks, because this team has to kick off the cobwebs, because they were struggling early in the season. Right? I believe San Francisco is going to be one of these teams to watch, so much so that I'm laying two and a half points, right? I bought some points in this game. I'm laying two and a half points. Um, Again, I bet this game early. I don't know what the line is now, but I'm laying two and a half points and my payout is only a minus 200. I think they handle business against the Cardinals. So to sum up, I like the Vikings. I got plus two and a half. I got plus one and a half. Made multiple bets on the game over the Dallas Cowboys. I like Denver laying three over the Las Vegas Raiders. Right. In fact, if I had that Denver bet to do again, I probably would buy half a point to bring it within three, right? Make it Denver minus two and a half, simply so that if the game ends with Denver ahead by three, I win as opposed to push. I like the Patriots, right? I did buy the half point to get to the minus two and a half. In fact, I bought a full point. I believe when I bet the game, the Patriots were three and a half point favorites. Now the lines drop to Patriots minus three. I paid a little bit, so my payout's only going to be a minus 144 if I win the game. I'm laying two and a half Patriots over Jets. And of course, I have the 49ers, right? I'm laying two and a half. Again, I like two and a half better than three. Uh, Costs me a lot of money. My possible payout is only a minus 200. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me also say, too, that a few years ago, the Niners played the Vikings and Kirk Cousins in the playoffs, blew them out, right? Blew them out, right? Pay close attention to the seedings. Just know that Kirk Cousins in the playoffs against the Niners Hasn't done that well. Also, just understand that Jimmy Garoppolo, and I get it, right? Uh, the team's drafting Trey Lance. They're drafting another quarterback. Uh, 49er faithful are upset that Jimmy gave away some fourth quarters or couldn't hit a wide receiver on a big-time play uh, in the playoffs that could have iced that Super Bowl against the Chiefs. Okay, I get it. Jimmy's not everyone's favorite quarterback, right? Jimmy does extremely well against the Rams, right? Jimmy was ahead of the Rams late in last season's playoff game, right? Look at what the Niners did to the Rams in the regular season, right? Folks, Jimmy is a playoff quarterback. This Niner team is the kind of team where if they can just get in the playoffs. They don't have to win the division, and they might win the division, right? We all know Seattle's overachieving. But if this Niner team can just get in the playoffs, then you're looking at possibly a surprise juggernaut. Understand, too, they played Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs, roughed him up, and that, that Green Bay team was a lot better than this Green Bay team, right? Back then, Rodgers had Devontae Adams, right? Understand, too, Green Bay is going to have to do some work just to get in the playoffs, right? I believe they've already lost the division. So just pay attention to how the whole thing works out. 
Um, the Niners don't have a great record right now. I'm just telling you they have great talent. But if they put it together and only lose one or two more games, right, then whatever the seeding is in the NFC, and I understand Philly's going to be highly seeded. Um, obviously, the Vikings are going to be highly seeded, right? The Cowboys might make a U-turn, turn it around, right? Whatever the seeding is. The Niners are going to be a team you need to keep an eye on. That's how I see it. I expect them to beat Arizona. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your picks in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.